Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm going to talk all about ocean fertilization in this video. Ocean fertilization is, is uh, something that we absolutely have to do in order to draw down CO2 from the atmosphere ocean system. At this stage, we don't really have much choice. And this is a very, this is, should be the least expensive, the safest, the most efficient way to draw down CO2 from the atmosphere so that we can restore stability to, the, to our climate system and so that we can reinvigorate life in the oceans and draw down vast amounts of CO2 from the atmosphere. So Google whoi.edu, that's Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. Um, Google whoi.edu, uh, ocean fertilization, and you can find this site, Ocean Carbon and Biogeochemistry Group at Woods Hole. Um, and this is their website here. Um, lots of good graphics. Ocean fertilization. Can iron addition keep fish on our plates? The entire marine food web is supported by tiny plants called phytoplankton. Growing near the surface, they need sunlight, they need CO2, they need nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. Those are macronutrients and micronutrients like iron and zinc in order to grow. Iron is available in very small quantities in the ocean, so it limits phytoplankton production in many regions. When you go to the Caribbean and you see that toilet bowl light blue color, there's no phytoplankton in that water. Therefore, the light penetrates deeply and you get that blue color, okay? We need, if you go to coastlines where there's a lot of upwelling of nutrients, upwelling of water, there'll be nutrients in that water. You get phytoplankton blooms, zooplankton blooms, the whole marine food web proliferates, and those are great fishing regions along coastlines. Most of the vast ocean is deficient in the nutrients, so we don't have phytoplankton. The key thing to recognize is that in the last four or five decades, we've lost about 40 or 50 percent of the phytoplankton in the ocean. So I'm talking about bringing the oceans back to a healthy state. I'm not talking about trying to do some crazy thing. I'm just trying to talk about restoring the ability of the ocean to extract the CO2 from the atmosphere that, has, that it has done in the past because the, oceans, the ocean sink is failing and CO2 levels in the atmosphere are continuing to accelerate upwards even though human emissions have somewhat stabilized. So go to this website and have a look. There's been 13 open, exper open ocean experiments looking at phytoplankton growth from things like adding iron into the ocean to stimulate these blooms. But few of them have looked at the higher trophic levels like fish and things. Um, you know, there can be a time delay in things from when you get a bloom to when you get the zooplankton to when you get the smaller fish and the bigger fish, etc. How do, will iron affect marine fisheries? What about the depth of the water and all that thing? So there's lots of different things here. Um, you know, what is ocean fertilization? I'll talk about that more. Iron dumping experiments, climate intervention reports, climate intervention, CO2 removal, and also uh, solar radiation management intervention. A couple reports. Um, geoengineering studies on open ocean um, and things like that. Now, this is, a, this is to increase public awareness on this topic and advance scientific research. So there's a section for non-scientists, there's a section for scientists, and I'll have a look at some of the things on there. So, for example, the basics. What is ocean fertilization? Okay, so it talks about basically what it is. Um, you know, how basically you stimulate phytoplankton growth so you get more CO2 captured. Okay, and if I go here, uh, let's have a look. Let's see if I can expand this. 
control plus, control plus, there we go. Okay, so this is uh, you know, a complicated uh, schematic, which I'll explain some of the key things. This is a surface ocean, the euphotic zone, zero to 100 meter depth, the twilight zone. Some light gets here, it's, it's, a, it's a euphotic zone. Photons get down to this depth through the water. They stimulate phytoplankton growth. Twilight zone, 1,000 to 100 to 1,000 meters depth, very little light gets through, and then the deep ocean, 3,700 meters and down. So you get phytoplankton growing at the surface. You have CO2 in the air mixing with the water. You get CO2 absorbed in the water. You get sunlight, you get nutrients, as long as you have nutrients, you have phytoplankton growth. Then the zooplankton are the animals that eat the small plants at the base of the food chain, and then fish eat them, and so on. Um, okay. Um, then you have down here, you have detritus, which is sinking. So you have um, the excrement from the small animals and the fish. You have the organic material from the dead phytoplankton and dead animals sinking down. Okay, some of it is broken down by bacteria, some of it is consumed, uh, some of it keeps going down, and you get, so you get organic carbon sinking, and you get it into, it goes down to the seafloor, the benthic zone, and it goes into the sediment. Once it's in the sediment, it's removed from the atmosphere ocean uh, system for a long period of time. Okay, so there's different, um, there's different, also, you know, when water downwells, it, ca it can carry lots of CO2 downwards to the deeper water. When water upwells, it brings up nutrients, but it also brings up uh, CO2, okay? So there's all of those things going on. So ocean fertilization is, there'll be a limiting factor for phytoplankton growth. In vast parts of the ocean, um, it's iron that is a limiting factor. You can have lots of nitrogen and phosphor and all of the other nutrients necessary for phytoplankton growth, but if, you're, if there's no iron there, then you're not gonna get phytoplankton growing. So how does iron get there naturally? Well, when there's lots of wind over desert areas, it blows dust from the deserts into the oceans. There's iron in that dust and that can stimulate the phytoplankton. When you have rivers, flowing off the land into the ocean. These rivers are carrying mud, um, fertilizers if they're near farm areas, organic material. There's lots of iron in the flow and that will go run into the ocean. There's also upwelling of nutrients from down here with upwelling of this material contains lots of nutrients which can stimulate phytoplankton growth. When there's a large volcano, the ash can spread a long distance from the volcano and there's lots of iron in that material. So all of these things stimulate it. So we're just talking about, about, about stimulating phytoplankton growth on vast parts of the ocean where it's not presently growing. First of all, to restore to what we restore the phytoplankton to levels about 40 or 50 years ago, right? If we doubled the phytoplankton levels in the ocean now and that would suck up huge amounts of CO2 from the atmosphere, and it would bring us back to levels that we were at just four or five decades ago. And then we can go even past that and go back to what levels that we were at, you know, 100, 200 years ago when we had the oceans teeming with life and fish and carbon. All those things have carbon in them. And rather, the carbon should be in them as opposed to in the atmosphere and oceans where it's modifying the chemistry of the oceans and the atmosphere to the detriment of humans, to the detriment of civilization, to the detriment of, in, of, 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 of animals and plants on this entire planet. Okay, so the basics, um, this is the science version, the basics. Okay, um, so the CO2 levels, remember that bathtub scenario I had from a few videos ago? You know, you got a bathtub, the bathtub's filling up. Okay, we've opened up the tap too much. Now we have to open up the drain by stimulating phytoplankton growth in the oceans to suck CO2 out of the atmosphere, to restore balance, um, to restore, to get this biological pump working. So macronutrient fertilization, 
we add macronutrients. These are high, high concentration nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus to the surface ocean to simulate phytoplankton production. So one of the ideas, there's an ocean nourishment corporation um, and the idea is to pump urea into the ocean to stimulate the phytoplankton growth. Okay, now we have to be careful. We have to avoid phytoplankton blooms which cause dead zones. That's basically in coastal areas, shallow water. We want to stimulate these blooms in deeper water so that we don't get this uh, effect going on. Okay, um, so this has been an Australia-based company, Ocean Nourishment Corporation. Micronutrient fertilization, we put iron, these micronutrients, low concentration nutrients like iron or zinc into the surface ocean to stimulate the phytoplankton growth. And these are some of the sites that have been examined for doing it. Um, okay, um, so these are some of the experiments here in, in different locations. Equatorial Pacific, okay, these regions here. We had Iron X1 in 93, Iron X2 in 95, and there's a proposed fertilization experiment off Chile to get the fisheries uh, strong, okay? Fisheries are failing there. If you can stimulate phytoplankton blooms, you can, you can get zooplankton growth, growth of fish all the way up the food chain, okay? So that's planned for, for this year. The subarctic North Pacific, um, 2001, an experiment, uh, 2002, different seeding experiments, and then the one, the 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 one off uh, Haida Gwaii, which I talked about in the last video, 120 tons of iron compound. Uh, there was a massive increase of uh, of salmon growth in the next year, the year after. There was a 35,000 square kilometer plankton bloom, lasted for several months. A wealth of data taken on it and there's calculations and there's all of this stuff here. You can see this, uh, you know, rogue Canadian iron dumping experiment. There's a lot of controversy over these things. A rogue climate experiment outrages scientists, okay? These things, um, we have to really deploy these things because the consequences of not doing anything and letting the climate continue to go to hell are way worse. The risks of that are way worse than than uh, doing doing these things. We need to we need to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. We don't have a choice at this stage. So here's an experiment um, in the Southern Ocean, um, and there's some other ones. European iron fertilization. There's a whole bunch of different ones. And here's a ocean iron fertilization field experiment. Um, carried out in the Southwest Atlantic in January to March 2009. Artificial upwelling is another idea. Okay, you can use a wave pump. You convert the wave action, the up and down motion of the waves on these tubes, and you can pull water up from below the thermocline, and it brings up nutrients, and you can stimulate phytoplankton bloom. So there's uh, stuff here on... There's links here on all of these things, okay? These wave-powered ocean pumps and floating tubes, okay? Bring up nutrient-rich deep water to the surface to stimulate phytoplankton blooms, okay? There's a video here on this experiment, um, and these things work, basically. Um, these are the idea. So these tubes can be 300 to 600 feet long, 30 feet in diameter. They're lowered deep into the ocean, and the waves move them up and down, and they pull up uh, water, and that water is high in nutrients, can stimulate phytoplankton bloom. So here's the idea here. These guys are moving up and down. It's pulling a one-way valve here. As you pull it up, the valve closes, pulls up a slug of water, then the wave uh, drops it down. In the trough of the wave, the valve opens, it refills with water. So the wave action pumps, and uh, you can bring up the nutrients, okay? And uh, this is uh, scientific literature on the topic. Okay, these are all links that you can find from the opening page here. Okay, from the opening page here. Scientific literature right here. And uh, there's, you'll notice that there's nothing recent, unfortunately. 2014 is the most recent stuff. Okay, we gotta get a move on and deploy this stuff um, and suck CO2 out of the atmosphere. Thank you for paying attention.